an interview with Dave Smith, the lamp maker, at his Waldo location that is currently for sale by Brian Davidson, Keller Williams Commercial. During the interview, you'll hear the rich history of Waldo, the changes that he has seen throughout the years that he's been there, and some amazing stories that could only be told by Dave Smith. Long story short, it was October, and all those, my parents, I told them, I'd like to do that. And they had a place at the Lacey Ozarks that they put a mortgage on to give me the money to buy Right, what they were asked. Right, yeah. yeah. And like I said, there wasn't nothing back here. It was just bags of trash. And you didn't start out with this big, this no. big area, right? right. No, no, no. Like a fraction of this no. is what you started with. Part of that first ball there that we went to, there used to be a bar there. Okay. That uh, guy that, it's called Leroy's Waldo Bar. And he, he got it in 1942 from a couple other guys who had it. They, they weren't doing so well. Mm -hmm. And he kept it 29 years, and he sold it to a guy by the name of Finley, and Finley Cornell. Finley Cornell, yeah. And uh, he'd worked for him for 10 years, and so on and so forth. So anyway, he ended up buying it. Okay. And he ended up marrying my sister. Oh wow! And a small both, world. <laughs> both of them's fourth marriage. And I said four and no more. <laughs> well, after he had his. Uh, that three or four more years or something, he said he wanted to sell it. Well, here I had this business, and I thought, that bar, first time I went in in 1967, a bottle of Budweiser was a quarter. Oh. And so, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'd have a couple bottles. I'd come up at night and work at the shop till 10 to 12 o'clock every night, pretty much, because I didn't know how to fix lamps. Right. And. Uh, do things anyway. I'd have a couple of beers before I come in here, and I just liked the place and the people going in there were really neat guys. And she wanted him to sell the bar, so I ended up buying it from him as they went down there. Okay. So I owned the bar and the lamp shop in the same bar. <laughs> I opened it up. They said they opened it at six in the morning. All those right. years, right. And closed at one thirty. I said, nobody drinks at six in the morning. Well, it'd be packed by six thirty because guys are getting off the night shifts. Mm -hmm. There's a fire station down here, and I think it's still there. Those guys that get off at six in the morning, they're instead of go straight home because they go home and they get in the kids' ways or, or making, uh, getting ready for school, right. taking showers and stuff. So they come in there. 9.30, they'd all pretty much left, and it wasn't just firemen. There was other guys going to work <laughs> and have a couple of beers for them. Some of them. Mm. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how, like, the Waldo and surrounding businesses have changed over the years that you guys have been here. You've probably seen a lot. Oh, yeah. The first, when I first came here, there was a cat store right over here, right on the corner. And uh, that's that was a big... Do you remember cat store? Uh uh. What was then it became Skaggs and then it became. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, it's CBS, right where the CVS is. It, it, that's CBS where it all came moved back. That was a parking lot for the yeah. other stores, but the other ones were right here on the corner. Mm hmm. And uh, there were a lot, there's a lot more mom and pop shops. Oh, okay. Yeah. Plains Bakery was next to us. Right. And they, they were, it was like a thrill. I mean, when people ask where you were, they say we're next to McLean's Bank because they always knew McLean's Bank, mm -hmm. you know, where they had it. So, yeah. And a lot of your bars that are here, like Bobby Baker's, that's just, it's been there a long time. It's just, just been different owners all through it. It's been going on. So, they had with it. But, uh, and there was a Milan's, it was a department store. It's where the city gym is. And uh, that's where the kids went to go buy their school supplies and their uniforms and stuff. It was like that. And the Milan brothers owned a lot of property here. And uh, they've all since passed away. I think there's a grandson left that has it. They actually, I think they finally, I don't know if they finally did sell the property due to the gym or if they even still own it. That bakery, I opened this up at nine in the morning. The bakery opened at six. I get up here, say at 8.30 or whatever, sometimes 
even earlier. There's, I couldn't find a place to park because it was just loaded with people going to that bakery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they stay in the line. And, and uh, anyway, why it was around a little after 10 o'clock before I could get a customer in here. <laughs> they just just had people lined up. And, yeah. And, The Romanelli's was a big restaurant over here for years. They used to have bumper stickers out that said, where the hell's Romanelli's <laughs> that you would see out there. And that was, you know, everybody was going for that over there. And they had a great, you know, restaurant there, bar, and it was there for a lot of years until the sun finally sold it. But, yeah. uh, it's been a strong area. Waldo has stayed very strong. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Yeah. I later kept the bar. I was the first bar in South Kansas City to start a three o'clock bar. In other words, you opened at six in the morning and closed three the next. Oh. And uh, I go, that head of liquor control kind of talked me into it because north of the river they'd done that. He says, it's. He said I'm not for it, but then he says now I am because you tell people they got to get out of there at one thirty in the morning. There'd be fights and pushing and shovings mm -hmm. and things like that. You tell someone two thirty more and well we're gonna be closing, they're ready to go home. Right. And they kept that kind of trouble down. And I was the first one out here for quite a while. People start filling up the bar around ten to eleven o'clock at night, leaving those other bars coming up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it did good. Yeah. So how long did you operate the lamp shop and the bar before you stopped doing the bar? I, I did the bar about four years. Okay. And the guy that I bought it from offered me more than double to get it back. Yeah. Oh, wow. Back. He, had, he had divorced my sister. Mm -hmm. The time when our business did really good was when we were here, the lamp maker, and then the light shop was down where the, where the tattoo place is down. It's oh, called okay. the light shop. And then you had the, all the antique shops over here, and then you had uh, Yates Furniture down the street. And what would happen is women come over, and Waldo used to have what they call Waldo Wednesdays, and there used to be the Wednesday magazine paper here. I don't know if you remember, that would go out, and a lot of almost all the businesses over here are advertising it. Well, they would, women would love to come over here to, to do the decorate because they go to the antique shops, the furniture place, and then they come here to get shades for their lamps or to get new lamps to go with things. You know, they did it and they looked forward to that. It was kind of like around, plus did they eat lunch at somewhere over here? So I would say that was probably like from 85, you know, into the late 90s that you had all that. that I mean, our business really shot up then, but it was a good thing. And down here where Bobby Baker's was, that used to be a store and a guy worked there. It was a grocery store in the 30s. And he delivered, people call her orders in and there's a barn right back here they had a horse and, and a, a trailer uh-huh so he'd go get their their groceries yeah and then go deliver them with wow. the horse and wagon hmm. and he did that for 20 years wow. and he lived up above that pharmacy thing that, that used to be apartments up there I don't know what's up there the now. hotel mm -hmm. and it's rented by the round jail <laughs> that, that guy that delivered the groceries with the team, of, he did it so long, and he'd tell me stories, Old West type stories, you know. Charlie mm -hmm. Bill? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, it, it, it was interesting, the things he told me about the Waldo area when he first came here. Mm -hmm. wow. So, anyway, but uh, then someone bought it and put a wall down to it and put a bar on one side and whatever business wanted to be on the next side. That bar's been there a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. You got, you've definitely seen a lot coming and going. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, next door here was a um, kosher meat market, and now it's a bar. <laughs> Everything but needs to go to a bar. Yeah. It's, at, it's at 20, well the guy who owned, bought the bar for me, he didn't like paying me rent after two years, so he bought that. It's at 25 years with no tenant. Wow. Uh, yeah, there used to be a jewelry store. There were all kinds of things. Used to be. But uh, at that time, there was just one place to park. Nobody wanted to rent it that way. Mm -hmm. Kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Anyway, why he converted it to the bar, and the bar's still there. So yeah. It's 
it's done well. Yeah. <laughs> they open at four in the afternoon and close at three in the morning, I think. History here where, uh, which now you've got the restaurants and stuff there, what's called, uh, used to be a bowling alley over there at one time and then it was a uh, movie theater. The movie theater at one time, well, yeah, it was where a lot, a lot of different things went in over there and uh, they were all locally owned and people supported everything. And, yeah. and the yeah. movie theater I'd take my kids to, and it was 30 cents to get in. <laughs> 25 cents for a beer, 30 cents for a movie. Wow. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> yeah. So let's circle back around to the lamps. Okay. okay. Tell me about, if you can pick just one, your most favorite lamp that was built here. Well, I know there's a lot, but. No, there's been many. The, the one I tell, talk about most was. I had only been in business about a year or so, and it was about this tall, and it had a crank up here and a place for a hose down here, and it, and it come out like this, and then there was a place the water was in, you mm -hmm. know, and it'd go up here to the hose, I mean uh, to the crank, and uh, a gynecologist brought it in, and I says. Well, I don't know, and it was glass, and I had to drill a hole that big in the center to get the pipe down to Oh, it, goodness. Know? And it was that much just for one spot, and there was two spots. I had diamond drills to mm -hmm. make them. So, anyway, I did what he wanted, and uh, he came to get it to get a lampshade on it. He liked it, you know, the way it was. He says, boy, he says, this was... 1848 World's Fair main thing in Europe. I mean, it, it won a one. Wow. And it was a douche bottle. <laughs> he says, this will give the girls something You're to talk about. <laughs> give the girls something to talk about while they're waiting on me. That's hilarious. I love telling that story. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what it was when I was. We did many more of those, but they oh, were newer versions. Yeah. <laughs> People would bring something in, and I'd go, in my mind, you want that into a lamp, and they tell me what they want, and so on and so forth. And they basically designed it. I was able to come up with the parts or whatever they wanted, drilling the holes and all, and uh, turn out real good. It was their idea that mm -hmm. I just able to do what they wanted, but some of them I'm gonna say, get out of here with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I needed the business, so. Right, big so, thing with sports deal, all the yeah. chief players or baseball players oh, yeah. would bring in hats or Footballs or baseball things or gloves and things, jerseys we'd make into lamps for. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. Hunters would read one of the neat ones I thought Dave did was a hunter. They were doing it for a friend of theirs. They had his boots, hunting boots, and then they had his own gun, and then they had some pictures, and we made this lamp for this whole thing. And he surprised me. That was and a third hand. baseman for the Royals come in, and uh, I think they were still called. The Royal back then, but anyway, I made things for him in the night. Uh, the, the thing that catches the ball. The glove. The, the glove. glove, yeah. Mm -hmm. I made that into lamp for him and then uh, put a couple things look like golf tees, mm -hmm. you know, and he could put a baseball on it and all. Oh. Well, he got traded to New York Mets and back, I don't know. A couple years later, he came in, wanted a baseball bat made into a lamp for him. And I says, oh man, you know, I had to cut this much off of it to yeah. do it because I couldn't get that, couldn't get that bit. And he pushed the bit down, it was a long bit, and it, it started turning like this. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, he made that and took it back to New York with him when he, you know, still third base out there and showed it to these guys. Six of them said, hey, can he do us? Oh, wow. And the first thing you know, the people who own the, uh, the Mets sent me a hundred bats. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so I, I had the bat and then the two golf tees here, which they could sign, that sign baseball, mm -hmm. you know, into, into the, the signatures on the guys. Right. And they had a place to put it there. Wow. But they really liked them. Right. And it's a so your work's all over the place. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. People yeah. used to come. Liquor bottles. 
I got a whole lots of liquor bottles. Yeah. But people come, let's say, from New York or California or what, and they knew we were here and they're visiting friends. Mm -hmm. And they would bring me things to make into lamps while they're here for two weeks. Wow. And that was kind of interesting, but, you know. I had great help, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, our help was really great. super. They're the ones who made the lamp. They, you know, after a while. Two of our guys that worked for us were retired, and one used to wire airplanes for TWA, and the other one wired telephones for, mm. you know, and TNT. So they were, they knew all that, and they knew every trick to everything, how to do and make some, and they they would kind of get together to do. These these are the retired years, and they both still worked for us over twenty some years. Wow. Mm. The one with TWA, I like telling this story. He came in and his wife came in. He wanted to see if I had some opening that did it. And he told me he'd been retired six months from TWA and all that. And so I said, well, what'd you do for TWA? He told me this and that. And I said, well, man, I'd like to have you, but I can't afford to pay you, you know, what mm -hmm. you were getting. His wife shoved him aside. You don't have to pay him nothing. Just let him work. <laughs> you know, we had, had some great, great employees working for us. And uh, they knew how to put lampshades on lamps. We had, we took inventory. We had a little over 10,000 lampshades in inventory on our shelves here. Because mm -hmm. you could stack them. Mm -hmm. Little one, one on top of that, one, you know. And, uh, so that's why we had plenty of space, but we kept enlarging it. And, uh, I like him enlarging. We had it. Yes, right. Every time Dave went on another fishing trip, I could knock the other wall, put something in here, and my employees will tell you that. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she did a great job buying the land. Because I too. knew we had a deal. Because you know, I, I was. Kind of from a poor family growing up, so I didn't think people paid that much for a lamp, you know. But she bought the good ones and put them in the window here. And mm -hmm. up. Yeah, and I'm people in stop here at the stoplight and they'd back up, you know, they'd start shopping the window there, just you know, waiting for the light to change. Mm -hmm. A lot of them go around, come back around, come in and buy a lamp. Yeah, there you go. It's a great yeah, location for that. that. I mean, this is really considered the heart of Waldo right here. Mm -hmm. This is, so that's what the property is. I know, but, and that's what I'd like to see. And I think with them building that building and they're doing more things, I'm hoping, you know, people. It's bringing more people into the area. Waldo's yes. like a unique area. It's historical, so that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you saw the ceiling up under here, it's that old yeah. type ceiling yeah. and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, we put yes. all the ceiling in and the lights here you're seeing, mm -hmm. and rewired the whole thing. Was, I think this was built in 1922, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, we and lived and breathed it. Not Dave wasn't the only one, that, but he Dave hasn't worked the last years as much. He got to vacation time of going on fishing trips and hunting trips, <laughs> and uh, the girls and I ran it and the guys, but 